now I'd like to turn over the podium to our, I mentioned earlier, our Interim Executive Director, Bridget Loden, and she's going to share a little bit about the work of our foundation. So um, I think Marianne's already said this, but really on behalf of our board and the planning committee that has spent um, almost a year working on this, we really appreciate your being here and your interest. And the Community Foundation of the Valleys, it was created to inspire generosity in our valleys, San Fernando and Santa Clarita Valleys. And some people don't really understand a community foundation. It's a little bit different than we think of other nonprofits, which many of you are here. We're a grant-making public charity, and we're dedicated to improving lives within our own geographical area. So we do that in many different ways, and I'll explain that very quickly. But one of the things we did when we first um, kind of reinvented ourselves in 2016 was we realized we needed, really needed to be a community foundation. So we really needed to help not compete with our local nonprofits, and we needed to have a good infrastructure. Starting with nothing, and I can say this because we've got Ventura County Community Foundation here who's been a wonderful mentor, so thank you. Um, but what we did is we partnered with California Community Foundation. And the reason we did that is they have over they're the oldest community foundation in Southern California. They have $1.5 billion in assets. They can run our back office better than we can, so we can stay lean and mean and we have them backing us up. We can use them for legal, we can use them for complicated assets, and it just makes it so we can be one or two people on staff, along with a lot of volunteers. So, um, and then it allows us, and then the other thing too, in our geographical area, I think some of you know this, some don't. We're consider, considered um, the um, service program area two for LA County. Our area is the largest geographically, it has the most people, it has the most poverty. And people don't realize that. So we you know, encompass 40 communities, and we're, I love this one of our, our immediate past chair, she would always say, I can go to an event on the west side for a woman's shelter, and they raise $1.5 million. I do it in the San Fernando Valley, or Santa Clarita Valley, and I might make 150. So it, it's just, we've really been overlooked, and so that's part of what we're trying to overcome, is that to realize we need to keep our resources here and really make a difference here. Um, one of the things that I think Jocelyn, who's here, and she was at UCLA when they actually did this study 10 years ago, but there was a study done on the transfer of wealth. And we have in our area, our SPA2 area, the highest net worth. We have the highest potential of transferring in the next 20 to 50 years, 33 to 400 billion dollars. Yet remember, it's not staying here, it's going out. Only out of our 40 communities, only 40 households give it all, and they don't give that much. So we looked at this a few years ago and said, gosh, if we could just get people to do 5% more giving locally, we would actually could bring in two to $20 billion. What would that do to help these problems? And with that, as you know, this study was done about 10 years ago, look at what real estate has done. So this is vastly larger than that. Um, and then, I know you guys have had a lot of staff, I'm going to throw just a little bit more at you. But um, every year, Giving USA actually does a report, and the report is about philanthropy. How much is being given in our country? So in 2020, there was $472 billion given in that one year. And what people don't think, remember is, it's not the corporations, it's over 90% individual people. So when we look at how much need we have in our valleys and the potential for giving, we've got a perfect windstorm of how, being able to how we can kind of help some of these problems. So that's what the Community Foundation really wants to be able to do and to facilitate that. So the way we do that in different ways. So with individuals and families, you can, and I have a little bit of literature outside, but um, sometimes we don't realize we think you have to be a Bill Gates to have a family foundation. 
you can do a very simple agreement and have your own family foundation and start it for $10,000. And you can do that with a community foundation. And it can be the Erwin Rosenberg Family Foundation. Right, Erwin? Okay. Um, and, there's, and people don't realize, too, there's a lot of times people think when you give, you have to give cash. There are many creative ways and very many ways where you can get tax benefits. We want to help people be able to do that. And the other thing, we've got, we want to leave legacies. I mean, we've all worked hard for what we've done in our lives. And we want to teach our kids to do the same thing. A community foundation can help you do that. So for our nonprofits, though, there's a, that's a different area we help with. Last year with the pandemic, we gave to 20 small to mid-sized nonprofits in our communities that were doing immediate response. So dealing with mental health, dealing with vets, providing food, homelessness, homeless pets even. You know, when we're, we work with Hope of the Valley with another one organization, Operation Blankets, that we're helping people who have, I mean, they have pets and the pets have needs. So we were able to provide funding for all of those. And then we also, a lot of nonprofits, um, and I know there's some other pr fundraising professionals here, don't have the ability to have really key staff to raise larger dollars or to work with those estates or to help with stock. We can help nonprofits do that. They don't have to have that staff. We can be there for them. And let me see. Then the other thing, nonprofits, we can provide education. Um, sometimes when you're especially a smaller or mid-sized nonprofit, you're so overwhelmed with your day-to-day -day work that you don't have time for education or realize there's resources that can help you. So we're there to help them. So next summer we're planning that USA Giving Report. We're actually going to narrow it down and look at California and offer a seminar for our nonprofits to give them information about what's really happening locally for them. Because California is very different than other states. And corporations, we can help, um, you know, a lot of corporations, they want to be good community partners, but they don't have the staff to do it. They don't have the ability to research who should they be giving it to. We can help them with that too. And then last but not least, we really work with a lot of professional advisors, and some are here. And the professional advisors, um, they're the ones that are your CPAs, those are your estate attorneys. And we actually partner with them to work with their clients and be able to help them plan their legacies that they can do through us. So, and in your packet, there's a seminar coming up on the 12th of January that is gifting techniques that maximize tax benefits because there are ways that you can take care of your family, get tax breaks, and do way better. So, um, so the bottom line is we believe that providing philanthropic leadership promotes local giving, which is the most successful recipe for a better community. So I want to ask you all, please give local your time, your talents, and your treasures. Thank you. Thanks so much, Bridget. And uh, a plug for that uh, January 12th survey. We are fortunate in our Community Foundation Board to have people with various expertise and areas of expertise. So Bill Wolf and Heath Goldman will be leading that. Um, so we're looking forward to that event. Um, one, oh, one more note, I for, we've been forgetting to remind you to fill out your evaluation or your survey, uh, evaluation survey, so please be sure to do that as we go along. One more note about the Community Foundation. There, there are many community foundations that give focus not only to their philanthropic work, but also have programs and strategies related to specific causes or regional challenges that align with their fundraising and grants distribution. The Community Foundation of the Valleys is planning to build on today's conference to develop future initiatives that are designed to bring Valley nonprofits together with business and educational institutions and other organizations to create long-lasting solutions to the issues of homelessness and housing and more broadly to address poverty alleviation. So stay tuned. You're going to hear more from the Community Foundation in 2022.